This is part three in a series of videos in which I'm assembling a power supply based on the Ryden RD 6006 power controller module. In the first couple of videos I went through the basics of how I intend to construct the linear supply using two toroidal transformers. And I wasn't actually going to make this particular video but decided that um, I would add this one to the series just to clarify a few of the points that I will be making later on in the design of the power supply. So firstly, if you recall from the first couple of videos, then I've decided to go for a construction like this. So I'm using two transformers and they'll be in a fairly unusual configuration in that the primaries will be in series and the secondaries will also be in series. Now this particular arrangement throws up a couple of questions and if this was a lower voltage supply I might arrange this differently and the two options that we have here if we simplify this and assume it's a single transformer the options we would then have are to have a center tapped arrangement so we could have the two transformers where the center tap point was the negative for the load uh, or we could, of course, go with the arrangement I'm actually going to use, which is to have an arrangement like this where I'm treating the two transformers as a single transformer. Now, the advantage of the center tapped arrangement, such as this, is it's more efficient in terms of the voltage drop we're getting through the rectifiers. So for this arrangement, we're only getting a single voltage drop on each half phase of the mains. Whereas in the non-center tapped arrangement, we're getting two voltage drops per half phase, one in each of the uh, two rectifiers. So obviously we've got two diodes in each half phase that uh, come into play. So we're getting a larger voltage drop through the rectifier. So this is less efficient in terms of the rectification part of the circuit, but it's obviously far easier because it requires only half the uh, number of turns on the transformer. Whereas on an arrangement like this, of course, we would need to double the voltage of each of the two windings. So we want uh, 48 volts in total. Um, but if we had this arrangement, we would have to have 48 volts on each of the two windings. Whereas with this arrangement, uh, we end up with a total of 48 volts, but only 24 on each particular transformer. So in this particular instance, it's, it's easier to use an arrangement like this. We're not talking about particularly high currents either. We're only talking up to six amps. And that leads on to the, the main uh, purpose for this video, which is to um, demonstrate some alternatives for the rectifier arrangement, not just for the ride and supply, but um, uh, methods I use on other pieces of equipment that you might find interesting. So firstly, if you are trying to source a transformer for a project like this, quite often you might find that the uh, supply of the transformer that you have, the voltage is not quite right. If it's only out by uh, maybe a volt or so, then you don't need to rewind it. There are alternatives, especially if the output on the primary is too high. So if we take this as an example, this is obviously the transformer I haven't dismantled yet. Uh, what I have here is a very simple full wave rectifier arrangement. So I've got a single winding from the transformer going through a full wave rectifier. It's been smoothed by the capacitor at the back there and we're looking at the voltage uh, on the meter. If I turn this on, then you can see we're getting a voltage at the output of about 21.5 volts. Uh, I also have this hooked up to a electronic load. so. Um, you can't see it on camera, but it's currently set to a constant resistance of 10 ohms. And that's currently giving us a, a load on this supply of 46 watts. So this is loading up the supply. If I turn the electronic load off, you can see that the voltage goes up to uh, about 23.9 volts. If I turn the load back on, you can see the voltage drops down to uh, 21 point, let's call it 21.6 volts. Okay, so 
the reason for the drop when we turn the load on is obviously we have um, various resistances in the circuit. We have a voltage drop across the rectifier and um, when you add these all together then obviously we get quite a significant voltage drop around 3 volts when we put a, a what is a relatively small load on this supply. Okay, so I'll turn the transformer off. Now, if that voltage was too high, let's say we only wanted 20.5 volts, then you don't need to fully rewind the transformer. What you can do is just take part of the outer covering off, uh, connect the end of the winding that you then expose. Bear in mind that the, uh, the primary will be on the outside. You can then extend this and put some extra turns on the transformer. You don't want to go too far, as I explained in the previous video. You do need to keep the operation of the transformer within a certain range, otherwise uh, you can make it very inefficient or even cause it to overheat. So what I've done here is just add a few turns to the transformer. You do this with uh, enamel copper wire normally, of course, and then you'd re-insulate it. Make sure you put some sleeving over the joins so you don't end up shorting uh, any adjacent turns. I'll just get this connected up. So this is just in series with the uh, original winding and then make sure that the turns go on in the same direction. If you put them on in the opposite direction the transformer is most likely to overheat. Okay, I'll turn it back on. I've noticed now that we've gone down by half a volt. So you know what the ratio is between the primary and the secondary and I've got the number of turns added to the primary to give us a voltage on the secondary that's half a volt lower than it was before. And it doesn't change the efficiency of the system. So if you try to do the same thing with a, um, a diode or a resistor, then obviously you'd be dissipating quite a lot of power uh, within your unit. Whereas this method doesn't dissipate any more energy within the system. So it's far more uh, efficient. It also gives you far better re uh, line regulation than uh, having something like an extra diode in circuit. It's very easy to do. It takes you 10 minutes to modify the transformer and then it's a permanent fix and you've got um, the, the modification in the output. If you're fairly certain you're not too close to the saturation of the transformer core, you can do the reverse and remove a few turns, but you do need to be very careful if you do that to make sure that the, uh, the transformer core is not driven into saturation. Okay, so I'll turn that back off. I'll just get rid of this because I don't like the mains sort of sitting uh, up in the air like that. Incidentally, this is not um, a very good way to do this sort of testing. It's not particularly safe. Um, so if I do kill myself on camera, then obviously I'll get quite a few hits, but I don't recommend doing this sort of testing uh, out in the open like this. You need to be a bit more careful than I'm being here. Okay, so I'll turn this back on. We've still got the electronic load turned on, and you can see now we're back up to the voltage that we had with these uh, windings removed. Now, one of the bits of equipment I do quite a lot of work with is the Altair 8800. If you're not familiar with it, it's uh, an old vintage um, computer system that has anything from 2 to maybe 10 cards in it, and those cards can draw anything up to a couple of amps each. The 5 volt supply that most of the cards use is generated on the cards themselves through a linear um, regulator such as a 7805, and the problem with that of course is uh, if you have too high a DC voltage going into the cards, those regulators can get very hot. Um, but if that voltage is too low, then you can get a drop out of the regulator output voltage and the cards and the system can become unstable. And one of the problems I tend to find on most of the Altairs that I've worked on is that the uh, DC voltage going into the cards from the back plane is too low and it needs to be a bit higher. It doesn't want to be a lot higher, but maybe half a volt or a volt higher would make all the difference. And that's where the, the next point I want to make in this video comes in. If you use a standard uh, rectifier like this, then it is uh, quite inefficient. And if you look at the specification for rectifiers like this, then each diode in this, it's just four diodes really in a package, 
each diode has a forward voltage drop of about 1.1 volts. And the issue you'll get is if you're using a four-way rectifier circuit, such as this, then on each half phase you'll get 1.1 volts in this leg and you'll get 1.1 volts in the other leg. So you, they're in series, so you get a total voltage drop of 2.2 volts. So not only does that give you a significantly lower voltage at the load, uh, but also you dissipate a lot of energy within the rectifier. If you're, for example, supplying 10 amps and you've got a 2.2 volt uh, drop in the um, rectifier, then you're looking at about 22 watts dissipation in the rectifier alone. And that obviously can cause issues. And that's why quite often you'll find that they use the center tap version of the full wave rectifier circuit. The reason I don't need to do that in my setup is what I'm now going to show. Uh, there is a way to uh, get the best of both worlds, have a simpler transformer, uh, but not suffer the same dissipation and voltage drop going through the rectifier. If you're winding your own transformer from scratch, it doesn't really matter. You can just put a couple of extra turns on the um, transformer to, to counteract this voltage drop, which is what I mentioned in a previous video. Um, but you do have an alternative, which is what I want to show now. Instead of using a standard bridge rectifier such as we have here, you can assemble something like this. I use quite a few of these. It's something I started using a, quite a while back and I've done quite a bit of work with these and they do work extremely well. I'll demonstrate it now, but before I do, we'll have a quick look at the spec sheet for this. Let's turn the supply off. So it's based on this device. It doesn't need to be this device. Something similar uh, would be uh, quite uh, suitable. It's really just making sure that you have a device that has a very low forward voltage at relatively high currents. Um, I can't use this in the uh, ride and supply. I'd need to go for a higher voltage one because this is limited to 40 volts, but there are higher voltage versions of this device. And if we look at the um, page on the spec sheet that shows the forward voltage versus current, you'll see that in the range we'll be using it um, on the Rydon or the range that we use it on the Altair, it's got a voltage drop, forward voltage drop of about 0.25 volts compared to 1.1 volts for a standard bridge rectifier. And because we're, we have that drop twice in the circuit that we're looking at, then your saving in voltage drop is 2.2 minus half a volt. So in other words, we're saving about 1.7 volts in voltage drop. Not only does that give us a, a higher output um, DC voltage, but it also means that we're dissipating much lower power in the rectifier itself. In fact, it's, it's a significant drop. We're down to about 15-20% sort of, of the power dissipation in the rectifier that we would normally see in a standard bridge rectifier. Does vary with current, of course, but um, we're talking here about sort of the 5 to 10 amp range. And if you want to use this in something like an Altair, it can up the inputs to the boards that are causing problems from maybe 7 volts up to a little over 8 volts, and that does make a huge difference. It makes the entire thing much more stable. So I'll quickly hook it up now. I'm just going to replace the bridge rectifier. It sits in exactly the same place as the bridge rectifier and effectively this circuit uh, just duplicates the bridge rectifier circuit. So I'll just get this swapped out. Okay, so I've replaced the bridge rectifier. Um, I would say that this has only been on for a few minutes at relatively low power and this is now really hot. It's almost too hot to, uh, to keep hold of. Uh, the, this little circuit is, as I said, just an exact drop-in replacement for a bridge rectifier. Now currently the electronic load is switched off, so I'll power up the transformer. And you can see that previously we had about 23.9 volts, something like that, and now we're getting 24.9 volts. So we're getting, with no real load on this, about one volt higher. If I turn the electronic load on, so it's now dropped to 22.6, and previously it was 21.6. In other words, we've gained um, almost exactly one volt higher output without doing anything other than swapping this particular circuit.
there are quite a few other major advantages, especially if you're trying to get low noise supplies in using something like this. I won't go into it in detail now, but it, it relates to the fact that the switching point for rectifiers is not at the zero voltage of the main cycle because obviously there's a forward voltage drop in the rectifier and each diode so the voltage at each half cycle has to get above the forward voltage for the rectifier before it really starts to conduct and that causes a kind of step in the current waveform depending on the forward voltage of the rectifier and when you use something like this that has a much lower forward voltage drop then the noise associated with that step in the current waveform is far less you tend to find this will give you a much quieter supply in terms of uh, noise that uh, you get coming through the other thing of course is this dissipates almost no heat whatsoever and this is um, it's been on for a minute or two and it's still uh, just cold um, so it's a very efficient circuit, it's, it's quite useful if, you've, uh, as I say, you're running into problems with an existing piece of equipment not having quite enough output uh, on a DC rail, or if you have the opposite and you're getting too much DC output, then a good solution is just to add a few turns to your uh, primary winding. Just make sure you do it safely and that you insulate it properly afterwards. Okay, in the next video we'll be looking at rewinding the transformer that I dismantled in the previous video. And at some point I will be demonstrating the uh, operation of the CNC winding machine. I've had a few requests to show that working. So I won't do it as part of this series, but I will do that fairly soon and um, show how it's used and the sorts of things it can be used for. As ever, comments are welcome.